and and I want you to appreciate their work too as we try to keep things moving as best we can. As we share together this morning, we want to remember to pray for the special needs that have been mentioned in days past, but uh, keep praying for these leaders that have to make decision about uh, maybe releasing a little of, uh, of the uh, power so that we can begin doing some of the things that we want to do. Uh, or need to do, maybe more so than want to do. But uh, this is still a very serious set of circumstances, folks. So let's pray that uh, we can be worshiping together uh, really, really soon and be released to carry on in life. Let's uh, share just a moment saying thank you to the Lord for this week. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for this week. We give thanks again, O oh Lord, that we can be here and that we can share online and that we can uh, continue to share your word, your message, your power, and your strength through our prayers and through uh, looking into your word. We pray, O oh Lord, that there will be people blessed as we share this word. We pray, O oh Lord, that lives will be changed as we share this word. Father, let us worship, let us seek Jesus this day. In his name I pray, amen. We're going to do both verses of The Longer I Serve Him. 374 if you have a hymn book at your house. As we continue to serve him and as we continue to try to minister, uh, there's certain circumstances that uh, demand our prayers. Uh, talking with Terry yesterday concerning Louise and prayers are still very much uh, wanted for Terry and Rebecca as they give care to Louise. Uh, keep her in your prayers. 
uh, continue remembering the babies, uh, one recovering from surgery and then the newborn, uh, you know, a couple of weeks old now. So just continue praying that those families will be continuing to do good. I uh, want you to also continue remembering uh, the Barber family in your prayers. Uh, please, please keep uh, Eva in your prayers. Uh, she is uh, she is beginning to miss her husband of many, many years, and so uh, would like for you to continue to lift her and her caregivers to the Lord. Uh, these are some trying times for lots of families. Again, remember the circumstances that all of us are facing, uh, situations that we have never had to deal with before in our lifetime, and uh, just God is bigger than this. Continue to pray that he will work and that we can see some miraculous things take place that will release us to be doing life, uh, but just to do it better than we did it before. Let's pray. God, it's a really a privilege to be able to stand and name needs and know that you hear us and know that you will respond and know that even though we may be separated right now by adverse conditions, our hearts are still together. Our strength and our power is still in you. And Father, that uh, when we are allowed to come back together, we're going to have an Easter and a celebration and a, and a love offering for our uh, Annie Armstrong Easter offering that will... Uh, that will just set us on the right path and point us in the right direction for ministry and service. Uh, God, we just pray that everything that we do when we're allowed to come back together will be to honor you and will do wonders for your kingdom. We ask, Father, for you to minister on our behalf where this virus is concerned. We pray, O oh Lord, that things can soon be uh, a semblance of normal for us again. You are the creator. You are the sustainer. You are the power over all creation. And this has no power over you. We ask you, O oh Lord, to minister and help us to see what you do and to honor and praise you even as we're separated but hearts are together and minds are together and thoughts are together father use this to minister and use this to draw people to jesus help people today to seek jesus i pray this in his name amen Make me a channel of blessing. We'll sing the first stanza. Is your life a channel of blessing? Is the love of God flowing through you? Are you turning?
Easter has come and gone, but in Scripture, I'm going to take you back to that morning uh, of Easter. And in Luke's Gospel, the 24th chapter, when those ladies that came to the tomb uh, approached the tomb, uh, as they got there, it said that as they were afraid, they bowed their faces to the earth, and they said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again? And they remembered his words. Seeking Jesus. I know why you're here. But why did you come to where the dead are at to find the living? He's not here. He is risen. Don't you remember? He said, I have to be crucified. I will be buried, and the third day I will rise again. Why are you looking for the living where the dead are at and the light comes on I remember I remember him saying that why do you seek the living among the dead now in John's gospel chapter 20 he is talking or is going to be talking to Thomas. Now, you remember, Thomas is the one that was doubting. And Jesus had appeared to the disciples, but Thomas was not there. And he had spoken peace to the disciples. And the disciples told Thomas about what had taken place. And Thomas still would not believe unless he could touch the master's hands, Jesus' hands, unless he could reach his hand into his side that was pierced. I can't believe. Well, Thomas, in John chapter 20, at verse 24, it says, Thomas called the twin, one of the twelve was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said to him, we have seen the Lord. And he said to them, unless I see in his hands the print of the nails and put my hand, my finger into, or my hand into his side, I will not believe and after eight days, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace to you. And he said to Thomas, Thomas, reach your finger here and look at my hands. Reach your hand here and put it in my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Unless I can just touch those prints, Unless I can stick my hand into his side, I'm not going to believe. And what was Thomas actually doing? He was doubting. But you know what he wanted more than anything else? 
He wanted to see Jesus. Thomas was really seeking Jesus. That's what he really wanted. And when Jesus stood before him and said to him, Thomas, without any other conversation going on, Thomas, reach here with your finger. Reach here with your hand. And no doubt Thomas's eyes got about as big as oranges that morning as Jesus spoke to him and said, Thomas, reach your hand out here. Put your finger right here where the spike was. Slide your hand here under my coat. Feel where they pierced my side, Thomas. Thomas cries out, my Lord. And my God. Today, what I want us to see is that we need, especially today, especially in the circumstances surrounding the whole world right now, we need to be seeking Jesus. We need to be seeking His power. We need to be drawing on Him. Everything about life has been interrupted for us. Everything from homes to work to church, every day is interrupted for us. We need to be seeking Jesus in the midst of this conflict that we were in. And what happened to Thomas? Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God, what has happened to Thomas? I think we would call it resurrection faith. Resurrection faith. My Lord and my God. You see, what Easter is about is resurrection faith. Ladies come into the tomb that morning to anoint the body of Jesus. Reminded, why are you here where the dead are at looking for the living? Don't you remember Jesus said after three days, I'm going to be resurrected? Oh, yes, I remember. What can we call this? Resurrection faith? Oh, yeah, I remember. Jesus was going to be resurrected. We need to go back and tell the others, Jesus is alive. He is risen. Resurrection faith. But you see, Easter is just the start. Easter is just the beginning for the Christian faith. It's after Easter that the disciples are given the Holy Spirit. It is after Easter that Jesus imparts special power to the disciples. It is after Easter that people began to realize the resurrection is the answer that we've been looking for. It was after Easter that they realized This is God's answer to us. This is God working concerning death. <coughs> Excuse me. Faith and the resurrection, <clears throat> or resurrection and faith. We'll get over this in a minute. Resurrection and faith, or faith 
and resurrection. This is the beginning of Christian faith. <clears throat> this is the beginning of resurrection faith. The resurrection and faith cannot be separated from our Christian life because the resurrection and faith is <clears throat> our Christian life. The resurrection and faith is to describe the ultimate truth for you and I as Christians. The ultimate truth of our faith is that God was in Christ. God was in Christ working for us. God was in Christ leading up to the crucifixion. God was in Christ. Thank you, Brian. God was in Christ leading not just up to the crucifixion, but through the crucifixion. God was in Christ as Christ said it is finished on the cross. God was working in Christ when Christ was in the tomb. God was working in Christ when Christ was resurrected from that tomb. <clears throat> Jesus is suffering on a cross. <clears throat> his resurrection and now his appearance. The resurrected Savior appearing to disciples. The resurrected Savior appearing to other people. The resurrected Savior making an appearance and making an appearance with the disciples when Thomas was there. Just what Thomas had been seeking. I will not believe until I can see Jesus. I will not believe until I can touch him. I will not believe until I can feel his side. Thomas, here I am. I'm the one you were seeking. These are the prints that you were seeking. This is the side that you was seeking. Thomas, reach here. My Lord and my God. Resurrection faith. Resurrection faith. Thomas, <clears throat> you join with those disciples and now with Jesus before you you have a testimony I have seen the resurrected Savior I have seen the resurrected Jesus and now we have a living testimony now we have a testimony which is becoming a living reality for other people because Thomas is going to be able to say, I saw the risen Savior. And he told me, he told me, I, I, I shouldn't have been doubting. Here, Thomas, try these scars. See how they feel, Thomas. The living reality is Jesus is alive. This testimony leads to resurrection faith. Christians, how about your resurrection faith today? How about that resurrection faith? Because you see, we also have <clears throat> a testimony of our experience with the risen Savior. 
Jesus is alive. How do I know that? I know he lives. Why? He lives within me. He lives within my heart. I have. You have, Christian. Christian, you have a living testimony of a living Savior. That's the reality of our life. Well, you know, Paul had some words to say about the resurrected Savior. <clears throat> Paul says, But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Victory? What victory did Jesus achieve? You see, people thought Jesus was going to the grave and in the grave they would find a dead Jesus and that would be Satan's victory that Jesus would not come out of the grave. But what they found was he's not among the dead. He's among the living. And Jesus claims victory over death for me and for you who believe. Now, if you have not yet had an experience with the resurrected Savior as your personal Savior, today is a good day for you to consider a relationship with the living Lord. Jesus is risen. He has given victory over death. He is our Lord Jesus Christ. Listen. Listen carefully. The resurrected Jesus is the same Jesus that walked this earth with these disciples. This resurrected Jesus is the one these disciples watched as he performed miracles. This resurrected Jesus is the same one that healed people taught people this same Jesus is the one who went to a cross and died this resurrected Jesus is the same Jesus they walked with him they talked with him they heard him teach Jesus was Jesus after the resurrection How could it be? How could it be that this Jesus would be walking the earth again before his ascension after his death? How could it be <clears throat> a body, a resurrected body walking the earth? How could it be? Listen to what Paul records in the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians, verse 42. Paul said, so also is the resurrection of the dead. The body is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. Sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. Flesh and blood cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. And so here we have somewhat of a mystery. How could it be that this Jesus is still Jesus after his resurrection. A spiritual body, a physical body. How can that be? 
And you know, this is one of those great mysteries that'll be revealed one day when we enter into that kingdom of heaven with a spiritual body, a glorified body, resurrected. It's not either or, but there is a time for this to change. It's not either physical or spiritual. It is that we're going to encounter both physical, spiritual. Making that change, that's in God's hands. That's in glorious hands. That's in hands that can do more than we can even dream. Now listen, folks, what I want to say to you today is I want you seeking Jesus. If you don't know him personally, I want you to claim Jesus as your Savior. You know, I realize that we're not together. Uh, 250 people sitting here or 50 people sitting here or 75 or 80 or 20 sitting here. But if you're hearing these words, you are able to know and understand that every person on this earth should be seeking Jesus and a personal relationship with him. This same Jesus is going to come again one day to carry us into our eternal reward. To those who believe and today would be an excellent day for you to invite the resurrected Savior into your life to save you. And today would be an excellent day for you to call out for that salvation. Maybe, maybe you're saying, well, you know, I, I don't know all the right words. The right words are this. Jesus, I realize that I'm a sinner. I realize that I have sin in my life and I need to be forgiven. I know and I believe today that you are God's son, the savior of the world. And I want to invite you into my life right now to be my Lord and my savior. If you're willing to do that, He's willing to come into your life and save your soul right now. And so I would invite you to make that your prayer as we close today. Let's pray. Father, right now in these moments, I'm praying that there are some who are hearing these words and who will call out for salvation and I pray oh Lord that you will give to them that salvation that you promised through Jesus and Father that whoever that is calling out in the name of Jesus today will experience the resurrection faith that Thomas experienced that we have experienced Jesus lives, and he can live in your life today with an invitation to come into your life and forgive you of your sins. Would you make that prayer today? Heavenly Father, Christian people need a touch of your strength and assurance today that you're still in control that the circumstances we are facing every day are not bigger than you. And we can trust you in these circumstances. God, I pray so much 
so diligently for you to intervene in these circumstances that things can change and life will go on with us serving you better more faithful than we've ever been I pray this in Jesus name the resurrected Savior amen